there. All right, let's get get my thoughts right out of the way at the top of the show. Um, let me know what you think about it, though. Use the hashtag HeyDan on Twitter. Email us at the story at KGW.com. Find us on Facebook and Instagram and all that stuff. But I do want to start tonight by saying that I understand, okay? I know that you're frustrated. I know you are. I know you are because you tell me each and every night using the ways I just told you to use. I know that you are tired of people spray painting buildings and picking on small business owners and treating our police officers like they're less than human. I get it. I will say though, I was a little surprised at first last night when I read some of the comments that you sent in after our coverage on tear gas and how it affects your body. During that coverage, we heard from women who lived in neighborhoods that were constantly in the line of fire. People who never actually went to even one protest, but reported major side effects from long-term exposure. We talked about the potential environmental issues and some concerns from a school that is constantly clouded in tear gas near the ICE facility downtown. I was hoping that everybody at home, that all of you could just focus on those details of the story. You know, m mainly the details about tear gas, how we use it, and the ramifications that we're uniquely experiencing. I mean, there's not a lot of evidence out there of how people are handling 100 nights of tear gas in a row and how it affects people or women or kids. And Portland neighborhoods are the test subjects here for this type of, uh, this type of discussion. But many people just had a really hard time compartmentalizing that. Arch Pope on Twitter said, hey, Dan, why does no one ever seem to blame the rioters for choosing residential areas to do their rioting for the collateral damage caused by their actions. They didn't have to riot next to people's homes. No, they didn't. You're right, they didn't. First, I, I would like to say we didn't blame anybody in our coverage. We didn't blame the police. We didn't blame the city. We didn't blame rioters, nobody. We just did a story about tear gas and how it could be making people sick. But. If you really want to place blame, that's fine, do that. And, and the rioters would certainly be on that list. But I'm curious, what do you wanna do with that blame exactly? Convince the anarchists to stop? These are people who want to abolish the police and prisons and capitalism while setting fires to buildings and breaking church windows. And you think they're gonna take responsibility for police tear gassing neighborhoods? Still, if you want to blame somebody, I get it. It helps in situations like this, blaming someone. And if you want to do that, it's fine. Blame away. Just as long as you understand how frivolous it is. It's like blaming the waves at the beach for knocking over your sandcastle. We don't control the waves, but we can mitigate the waves, right? So if you want your sandcastle to stand, it's kind of up to you. Let's build a moat or a wall or move further from the water. So you can blame all you want. But the only real blame that can actually make a difference is on us. The police in the city and its tactics, they're extensions of us. We can change those things. That's why we discuss them. But I realize that we've tried and nothing has worked. We haven't stopped the waves and the riots continue. I got a message on Instagram that said, what about the police being assaulted? Rioters, not protesters, would not disperse. That's a great point. That's why they use tear gas, right? To make people leave, to make them run away. Though I will say, you've seen the video. Most of those people were wearing gas masks. And I can tell you from personal experience, they work perfectly. So a lot of those people don't run and they don't leave. So. What will work? We gas people for 100 nights, that didn't stop them. Police have used munitions and batons. They beat people up in the streets during battles with protesters and rioters. They keep coming back. They used kettling, tactics like that. The destruction continues. If you're looking for solutions, welcome to the club. I do know this, our unique rioting epidemic pairs with a unique policy from our district attorney. You see, Mike Schmidt's office doesn't prosecute riot cases unless they involve violence, theft, or deliberate property damage. So let me explain it to you this way. When police declare a riot, no one technically has to leave. With this DA, being at a riot isn't illegal. Just being there isn't illegal. You can chant, you can get in an officer's way, you can stand your ground while people around you light fires and throw things at officers, and it's legal. 
Schmidt has been called on this many, many times by many people, and he always stands his ground, saying that he is a champion of free speech, and there is no indication to expect a change of heart between now and the end of his term in 2025. All this to say, I understand you're frustrated, because who wouldn't be? Who wouldn't be? Our city has never been in this situation before, and right now, there's no clear way out. But I promise you, we're not going to find a solution if we don't take a long, hard look at what we've done so far and the effects those tactics have had on the families who just want their city back.